copyrighted program created by the Rio Grande Oil Company. Calling all cars, attention all cars. Calling all immigration border patrol cars, broadcast 89. Be on the lookout for unscheduled airplanes crossing the border with smuggled Chinese. That's all. Ladies and gentlemen, Calling All Cars is pleased to present as guest artist on tonight's broadcast, Kermit Maynard, star of Ambassador Pictures, Canadian Mounted Story. Mr. Maynard will play the part of Mr. Carr in tonight's dramatization. Individuals. 
and as we are the only officials with whom they come in contact, to many we represent the personalization of the United States government, and as such must always accord the most courteous and kindly consideration and leave a, an impression of friendliness rather than of stern officialdom. We do not look upon the illegally entered aliens as criminals, but rather as poor unfortunates who are entitled to sympathy and consideration, even though corrective action on our part is legally mandatory. Tonight's story is typical of hundreds of hopeless individuals who, through false propaganda, put forth by those who do not hesitate to profit through the misfortune of others, every year attempt to come to this country illegally, believing it to be the land of wealth and ease, not knowing that they are really the victims of vicious racketeering systems. It is to the unearthing of such racketeers and the stamping out of such vicious systems that much of our effort is devoted. It is a gray March day in the village of Kwang Fu on the banks of the swollen, muddy Yangtze River in central China. Six weeks ago, the last grain of rice had disappeared from the storehouses into the hungry mouths of the starving coolies. Long since the cattle had been slaughtered, now even the sacred blue temple dog had been sacrificed. Stalking famine had come plague, red cholera striking down with blind impartiality the strong and the weak, the old and the young until there is no more room in the burial ground, no time to care for the dead, until those still strong enough to make the effort consign their grisly charges to the heaving brown bosom of the Yangtze. It is a desolate, sickening place, this village of death. And young Li Chung, as he stands with a friend by the river's bank, would willingly trade places with the silent human driftwood floating by. It is for this, then, that we labor long from dawn's gray breaking until past the hour of the setting sun we toil in the rice fields that we may someday float toward the great sea with the fish gnawing at our belly. It has always been so. Each year famine comes upon us. But never has it been like this. We have lived through three such times but our fam- we have lived to three such times, but our families have lived too. Now the dragon death families have lived too. Now the dragon death comes. Now the dragon death comes. And we all shall die. We shall die. Soon I too will follow. Soon I too will follow my honorable mother down. Oh, my honorable mother down the river through. Bearing the river through, there is the river through, there is the river through, there is nothing left. Carry oh, my honorable mother down the river through, there is nothing left. There is nothing left. There is nothing left. Shall you and I remain here in the river through, there is nothing left. Shall you and I remain here in the homes of our ancestors in the river through, there is nothing left. Shall you and I remain here in the homes of our ancestors? There is nothing left. There is nothing left. Shall you and I remain here? Oh, my honorable mother down the river through. There is nothing left. Shall you and I remain here in the homes of our ancestors? In the homes of our ancestors? In the homes of our ancestors? Until the dragon death tipple my honorable mother down the river through, there is nothing left. Shall you and I remain here in the homes of our ancestors until the dragon death tipple my honorable mother down the river through, there is nothing left. Shall you and I remain here in the homes of our ancestors until the dragon death tipple my honorable mother down the river through, there is nothing left. 
shall you and I remain here in the homes of our ancestors until the dragon death in the river through there is nothing left. Shall you and I remain here in the homes of our ancestors until the dragon death in the river through there is nothing left. Shall you and I remain here in the homes of our ancestors until the dragon death takes us to what else is there to do? We could leave. Leave? Leave our home? Why not? But where would we go? It is like this everywhere. This is the way life is. It is not like this everywhere. In America, it is different. America? Yes. In America, there is food. There is money. But how are we to go to America? It is even further than Shanghai, is it not? It is across the great sea, but we can go. My respected father has a friend. Surely he will help us go to America. Let us leave here. It could not be worse than this. In America, there is food. Plenty. I will make a last prayer at the sign of my honorable ancestors. Then we will go... I can for the son of my honorable friend if he will promise to pay for his passage when he gets to America. Of course we will pay there everything. Is, there is money in America. We will pay. Then leave everything to me. Just sign these papers and I will take care of everything. How much money will we make in America? Money? Much money. But at the tile a week. That is almost a dollar in America. A tile a week? That is indeed a fortune. Of course, of course. Yes, that is right. You have signed in the proper place. Now, no doubt you will want to see the sights of Shanghai. Would you like some money now? Respected sir, we did not come to our town. No, no, no. But you have signed our agreement. It is a loan. Well, we would like some money. Of course you would. Here. Yeah. Here is a tile of peace. May your ancestors ever smile upon you. And one thousand joysticks burn eternally for your memory. Enjoy yourself, my friend. And within a week, you will be started across the ocean to America. To America. Uh, it is difficult, Wong Kai, to believe that we will be in America. Kong. Yes, master. I have just bought two more slaves. Wong Kai and Li Chang enter their names on my book, and against them place a loan of five dollars American money. At once, master. Come through with another appropriation so we can hunt down some smugglers for a change. Smoking out, eh? Yeah, looking for Chinese this time. Seen any new arrivals around town? We cleared two through San Pedro ten days ago on the bond Tijuana. Just last week, four more came through. Yes, then you read it. I have seen several French Chinese around Busong Glon. Yeah? Any of them look like these pictures? Lee Chung and Wong Kai. They're the new ones that came in ten days ago. Senor, I did not. One Chinaman looks much like an author. Oh, no, they don't. Not to us, anyway. <laughs> but that's not. You say there's some new ones over at Busong's Laundry, eh? Si, yes, senor. Well, I guess that's my cue to have a couple of search warrants. <laughs> Ah, yes. Good thing. You like 
some laundry wash. Yeah, I got a couple of shirts. He is very glad to wash his shirt. When will you let me have them? Oh, maybe so. Tomorrow evening. Mm, not till then? Uh, looks like you should do it quicker than that with three men working here. Oh, no. Tomorrow evening earliest. Uh, these new men, not very fast. Well, uh, okay. Make it tomorrow evening, then. Well, well they're there, all right. The Lee Chung and Wong Chi are working as laundry assistants. That's well. Where are we going now? We're just a couple of yokels looking over the country. And I understand there's a very interesting casino down the coast of Santa Rosarita. Now, what do you say we visit it? Okay. Two very cold bottle shops to say. Oh, thank you. See, si, senor. Uh, waiter. We something else? Yes. By the way, how far is it from here to Ensenada? Ensenada is 35 miles. 35 miles, eh? Well, this is just about the halfway point between Tijuana and Ensenada. Right? Yes, senor. Yeah, pretty lonely spot, this. Old people, you know, they come by automobile stuff sometimes. Well, uh, if there were only a town here, that mesa over there would make a swell landing field for planes. Yes, it is a good landing field. Yeah? Any planes ever land there? Oh, sometimes, you know, they fly down here for the fishing. Say, I wish somebody would land now. I like to watch aeroplanes. Have they used the field recently? Well, yes, there was aeroplane here yesterday. It just landed and took off again. So, it just landed and took off. Could you tell enough about the field that way? Sure, boss, it's a stink. I told you to make sure you can take off with an overload. You know what that means. Three Chinamen stuffed in your cockpit. I can do it, okay. Now, you better be sure. I don't want any slips on this guy. There won't be. And that better not be. I'm charging me enough to run these guys in. $500 a head. I gotta charge you that. The Fed's just got another appropriation. They're making it hot down around the border. I'm taking chances. Okay, okay. Don't give me a sob story. Well, when are you bringing them in? Is it so as I line up another flyer? Line up another flyer? I thought you had flyers. Sure, they're stamping in me. Usually that's enough. But with the heat of the border patrol turning around, i got to have a man working up here, too. Well, who are you going to get for the other man? Well, i got to land on a young kid. Pretty good flyer, too. Young punk by the name of Dick Thompson. <laughs> Stop carrying on like that. Just because you lost that job is no sign that you and your poor old mother are going to starve to death. Oh, I know it, Ma, but it's discouraging. I was counting on that county fair job to pay the rent for a couple of months. Yeah. And I would have, too. All I had to do was a few loops and a couple of barrel rolls. Well, if you ask me, I'm just as happy that you did get the job. Now, I don't like the idea of you sky locking around the country, doing these airplanes, acrobatics. Someday you'll break your neck. Uh, not me, Mother. You don't realize that your son's another Charlie Lindbergh. <laughs> Young man, if you're thinking of flying across the ocean, I'll turn you over my knee and spank the idea out of you with a hairbrush. Well, don't worry about me flying across the ocean. That takes money. I haven't got enough of that to make you a decent haul. Oh, shit, you're a fine son, and I'm proud of you, and I know you'll make good. I wish I was so sure. God, I'd do anything for a job. Here's all you got to do, Dick. You just fly down with me to a field south of Tijuana, pick up three passengers, and fly back. Yeah, but who are the passengers? What do you care? You're getting 300 bucks ahead for them. Look at that kid, 900 bucks. Nine hundred bucks. Take you six months to earn that any other way, wouldn't it? Well, yeah, I, I guess it would. You can buy a lot of things with that dough, kid. Yeah. But why are you willing to pay so much? What's the catch? Well, it's very simple. We're going to run some salmon into Los Angeles. Smuggling Chinese? Hey, but that's against the law. No, sure it is, but what of it? Yeah, but I, I don't want to break the law. Why? Because you're afraid you'll get caught? Yeah, well, you ain't going to get caught. I guarantee you that. But it's not right. Listen, kid, that's a lot of baloney. $900 in cold hard cash can make a lot of things look right. Yeah, maybe so, but... For three weeks, the undercover man, Willis, works below the border, gathering Su Song's new laundry assistant, watching the cantina at Santa Rosarita, checking every strange Chinese in Tijuana. 
Then one day, he sends a report to headquarters in Los Angeles that prompts Walter E. Carr, district director of the Immigration Service, to summon his men. Boys, Willis has been doing a great job down below the border, and now it's up to us to finish it. They coming over? Yeah, tonight. According to Willis' information, two planes will leave from Santa Rosarita an hour before dawn. They will land at the El Segunda Airport at daybreak. Now, here's a map of the airport. As you can see, there are eucalyptus groves at either end. Sam Thompson, McCann, and Bond will be stationed with me at this side of the field nearest the shack. Dean and Brandy will be hidden in the clump of trees at the other side. As the ships come in, we will close in from both sides and nab them. Is that clear? Yeah. We've got to make doubly sure we get these men. Watson, I want you to take a detail into Chinatown. Should there be any last-minute change in plans that would cause us to lose our men, I expect you to pick them up in Chinatown. Undoubtedly, that's their destination. Yes, sir. You better go to City Hall and ask Jim Davis to lend you some of the men from his Chinatown detail. He's always glad to cooperate. Yes, sir. All right, boys, that's all for the present. We'll leave from here at 2 a.m. tomorrow morning. And early the following morning, as the Border Patrol inspects their rifles, and received last-minute instructions from Carr, six Chinese huddled in an old Ford truck bounce along the rutty road south of Tijuana. It is to then Wang Kai that at last we go to America? Yes. Hu Sung assures me by the hour of the boiling of the rice, we will be there. So soon? But we travel so slowly. It is far, is it not, Wang Kai? Yes, it is far. But we travel with wings. With wings? Yes. In the white man's devil bird. We fly to America. We fly in a roaring devil bird? No, Wong Kai. I am frightened. I do not want to fly. You must. There is no other way. No, no, no. Tell them I will not go. I am frightened. It is written that terror is the cloak of fools and children. But Wong Kai, we may be killed. Trust in the white man. And remember... Soon we will be in America, where there is food. Yes, yes, that is true. No more shall our bellies be like empty pig skins. No more shall we face the dragon death of Fang Fu. Certainly, Li Chang, the white man's devil bird can hold no more terror than the dragon death. I am content. We're stopping. Listen. Got all in there, Yes, we got one. Three, six, five, China boy. Who is speaking? What are they saying? It is one of the white men addressing Fu Song. I cannot understand his language. Okay, well, let's get him out of here. we got to get going. Come on, you birds. Pile out. But I Come on, on, I said, get going. Oh, they don't even yeah. have English. You tell them, Fu Song. Come on. Listen, Blackie, how are we going to carry six Chinese? We only got two-seater ships. Don't worry about that, kid. We just stuff them in the rear cockpit. Stuff them in? How? Oh. Anywhere they go in. Oh, but, uh, but they'll be uncomfortable. What's the difference? They're only Chinamen. Oh, and we'll overload the ship. Worth the chance for 900 bucks, ain't it? Oh, yeah, but uh, anything might happen with a load like that. If anything happens, bail out and let the ship crash. Let the Chinese crash with it? Sure, what's the difference? Well, if they're working on schedule, they ought to be here pretty soon. Hey, Carl, look. There's a guy coming out of that shack on the field. Well, I'll be darned. Good thing we stayed out of sight. He's munching around that ship over there, taking the top off the motor. Well, what the devil? He's going to start it. Now, uh, what do you suppose that's all about? Hey, that guy will bear watching. Hey, he keeps looking toward the south. Must be one of the gang. Maybe they're not going to land here at all. That'd make things just dandy, wouldn't it? Well, we're soon low. There comes two ships from the south, and our friend is climbing into his ship. And those two ships are circling the field. We're crossed up. They're not going to land. That bird's taking off. There's just one thing to do. Bond, you and McCann, follow them. Follow them? In what? In your car. Try to keep them in sight. Keep that siren wide open, and don't lose those ships. Okay, boss. Let's go, man. Siren open wide. The two federal officers scream through Gardena. Straight west toward Torrance. Bond, driving like a madman, and McCann scanning the reddening cloud streaked sky, mainly trying to keep up with the trio of speeding airplanes. It is a hopeless, uneven race. As the federal car roars along the gravel road... The landing, Bond, where? How do I know? It must be five miles ahead. Well, fast. 
try to pick the spot. It's over that rise ahead there, but the oil wells are. We may be able to catch them. Uh, six time in the back seat. 
Where are you boys from? We are taking a ride. Yeah, I bet. Two of those guys answered the identification list pictures. Lee Chung and Wong Kai. Come on, boys. File out. Where do you take us? Just up the street to headquarters. What is the honorable gentleman saying, Kylo? Why are we stopped? What does he want us to get out of the carriage, Kylo? It is the police. We are captured. Captured? What do you mean? We are under arrest. What will they do to us? To you? You will be sent back to China. I? Well, we shall see. Sent back to China? Sent back to our village of Kwang Fu? To starvation? To the dragon's death? Sara went Lai Chung and Wong Kai and their four companions, and to jail went Kai Lo. Two of the aviators were sentenced to San Quentin Penitentiary for two years on a charge of conspiracy. But young Dick Thompson, whose one adventure in breaking the law ended so unhappily for him, was spared by the court and paroled to me personally. He never repeated his offense and is now a respectable citizen and a devoted son still looking out for his old mother. Upon the com- completion of their prison terms, his two companions returned once more to the life of crime, one of them eventually dying in a crack up in Ohio, the other at present residing in an eastern penitentiary on a forgery charge. The big shot, the brains of the smuggling gam, a retired army officer, was one step nearer prison as a result of this job, and eventually we caught up with him and put him away for 19 long years. But that's another story, and I hope someday to be able to tell it to you. Thank you, Mr. Carr. Ladies and gentlemen, would you like to read more about the true crime stories dramatized on this program? Full descriptions and photographs of cases to be broadcast are published each month in the Calling All Cars News. Get your free copy of this unique publication, full of crime, movie, and radio news, at any service station selling Rio Grande cracked gasoline. While you're in the station, try a tank full of exactly the same gasoline that is used by more police cars, fire engines, and ambulances than any other brand wherever it is sold. Rio Grande cracked, the gasoline that gives you police car performance at no extra cost. (laughs) 